Top WWE superstar set to return soon due to injury. Also, AEW Forbidden Door. It looks like Tony Khan may be planning a massive swerve. And uh, guys, I like this. I like this idea a lot. If it's going to happen, I would prefer this much more. And what's really interesting here is with this swerve, there is a potential return for WWE as well. So this is really crazy. Let's just get into the rumor mill. Um, so obviously, a lot of people are wondering what is happening to Bailey. Uh, well, Dave Meltzer confirmed on Twitter that at any moment now she could return. Uh, there's no, uh, there, there's nothing out there that suggests that she has not been medically cleared. It's just a matter of essentially WWE getting her, you know, in, in the right spot creatively. We still don't know exactly what's happening with uh, Sasha Banks as well. So I do want to point that out with everything that's happening with Sasha Banks and WWE. I think this is a good time for WWE to bring back Bailey and push her. You know, Ronda Rousey, Natalia, they're working on a storyline and it's not bad or whatever. But at the end of the day, WWE has to really commit to Bailey here. I don't know if she's going to be a babyface or a heel, but it appears to me that WWE is really lacking on SmackDown and Bailey would be a very legitimate competitor for Ronda Rousey's championship. I also think that could be a really big match for SummerSlam. However, I don't want to see WWE get into a position where they bury Bailey just in hopes of pushing Ronda Rousey. I think right now, Ronda Rousey, she's great, you know, obviously, especially coming from MMA to WWE, I feel like she's great, but I would truly believe that WWE would be better off by having Bailey beat Rousey and getting Rousey moved to Raw. I think they got to kind of shake up the rosters a little bit. SmackDown is a lot lighter on the women's division, and I think you could build programs with Bailey as the champion against Shotzi Blackheart, against Natalia, against Aaliyah, against Xia Li. And then, of course, when you look at Raw, you can move Becky and move people around and shuffle people from Raw and SmackDown. I think a shakeup needs to happen. Raw is a lot more packed with the women's division. SmackDown is struggling, and therefore, it's making Ronda Rousey's championship reign not seem that important. So when Bayley comes back, obviously a big deal. I'm expecting Bayley to go into the women's money in the bank. And honestly, if I was WWE, I would have her win it. Okay, guys, so everybody is talking about Forbidden Door, and everybody believes that Cesaro is going to be the mystery reveal for Zack Sabre Jr., and this obviously would make a lot of sense for the AEW audience. However, there's a lot of talk that WWE could potentially be bringing back Cesaro, and if you guys didn't know this, uh, Max Dupree, a.k.a. LA Knight, he has yet to reveal his client for the maximum male models and the belief is that cesaro could actually come back to wwe with a lighter schedule and great money now i don't know what is taking wwe so long to actually bring back cesaro especially right now when you look at television roman reigns has a very small list of viable competitors and truth be told wwe on smackdown is struggling to build stars aside from gunther and roman reigns there's really not much happening on SmackDown that gets people excited. Now, that is where I think Cesaro makes a lot of sense, and having him return to WWE also makes a lot of sense. Having Cesaro alongside Max Dupree makes it a big deal for Max Dupree to be managing Cesaro, somebody who has struggled to deliver promos. Now, keep this in mind. This is just a rumor, but Cesaro returning to WWE could very well be the case. Cesaro going to AEW could very well be the case as well, but there is this belief that AEW could potentially try to pull off a swerve. And this is where I think AEW actually might be successful because when you think about it, everybody has this expectation that it's going to be Cesaro. And I get it. It makes a lot of sense for him to be an AEW, ROH, whichever one it is. It makes a lot of sense. But when it also comes to the real life connection of Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, I think there is somebody else on this list who makes a little bit more sense. And based on a new legal trademark, I would say that this actually has a better chance of happening than Cesaro. And that, of course, is the official debut of Bray Wyatt. Now, this is where it gets really crazy because I know a lot of people who watch AEW are immediately going to shit on this take. But if you look at the Wyatt family connection, Daniel Bryan, Bray Wyatt, it makes sense. Also, one thing to keep in mind, we don't know how AEW and New Japan are going to book this pay-per-view in terms of wins and losses, but I imagine that whoever is debuting right here cannot afford to lose. 
Now, Cesaro is somebody who can't afford to lose, but he doesn't have the same name value as Bray Wyatt. And I understand that a lot of people would be shocked by this, but Bray Wyatt beating Zack Sabre Jr. would make a lot of sense because of his mainstream appeal. You guys got to remember that Bray Wyatt was the number one merchandise seller in WWE. And imagine if Zack Sabre Jr. and the entire audience was expecting a five-star banger between Zack Sabre Jr. and Cesaro. It would make a lot of sense because that's what AEW typically does. But if you bring in Bray Wyatt, Bray Wyatt, you do some theatrics. I don't know. I'm not saying this is the greatest decision, but I would like it because it would be so different from what AEW does. I understand that almost 99.9% .9 of you would hate the idea of Bray Wyatt coming in and squashing Zack Sabre Jr. But if Bray Wyatt were to be part of Blood and Guts, this would be a really amazing thing for Daniel Bryan and Bryan Danielson because of the fact that AEW, when telling stories, does a good job of telling stories. And I can see Tony Khan, Bryan Danielson, and Bray Wyatt putting a lot of that real-life element from WWE into this mixture. Will the audience respond in a positive manner? And that is where I think probably not. But at the same time, I feel like AEW has to do it. Because look, you could put Cesaro in AEW and he could throw together a five-star match with Zack Sabre Jr. And I have nothing against that. And that is probably the more logical step. But if it is true that Cesaro is returning to WWE, AEW needs to make a big splash here. It can't just be John Gresham or a talent that we have seen before. It can't be a talent that nobody knows. And it sure as hell has to be a talent that is a major name that will that needs to make a big splash immediately. And having a guy like Bray Wyatt can do that. And logically speaking, Zack Sabre Jr. would definitely not be expecting Bray Wyatt. And I understand that AEW doesn't typically do the shenanigans with the theatrics and stuff. But that could be an element of logic to kind of make sense of why Zack Sabre Jr. had lost this match. So my point that I'm making is if it is in fact true that Bray Wyatt is headed to AEW... That could be what we see happen. Now, keep in mind, Bray Wyatt filed for a trademark uh, Wyatt 6, and there has been a pattern of former WWE talent trademarking their names prior to making their debut in these other companies. And I don't know. It just seems so fitting that, I don't know, just a few days before the pay-per-view, Wyatt 6 has been trademarked. So it's just something to consider. I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section down below.